Hey everyone, George here and welcome back to the channel. So we got a little bit of a problem here and this might be a clue as to what it is and a mystery is that I don't know how it happened. Anyways, hang in there with me. We're going to talk about ick and we're going to talk about what you can do to uh, deal with this problem in a way that doesn't kill all the plants in your tank because that is the situation that we have here. Anyways, hang in there with me and we'll be right back and we'll talk about this and we'll uh, give you some ideas if you're dealing with ick ever on how to take care of it. Stick with me and be right back. Not sure if you can see this very well, but if you look at these ruby red tetras over in this part of the tank over here, you can see the white spots on a couple of the fish. Now, I don't see this all over the tank. In other words, it's just a couple of fish that have the ick on them, but as any of you know, uh, that's going to, you know, really attack the fish in the tank. It's, it, you know, ultimately you're going to have a problem. So. The bottom line is if you're wanting to know what ick is, I'm going to try to zoom in here a little bit and uh, show you if I can without being really jittery. If you see that one fish right there, you see all the spots on it, that is ick. That's what it looks like. It looks like somebody took a salt shaker and just sprinkled it all over the fish. And the bottom line is that, um, again, I have no idea how this happened. Now, this is a planted aquarium. So the problems that you have with that are getting a medication that are not going to kill your plants. Typically, anything uh, that has copper in it and those kinds of things, these very harsh um, medications are the ones that are going to really, really... Uh, cause problems and raise havoc with your plants which you know obviously this tank is beautifully planted and we don't want that to happen so you have to pick a product that is going to uh, give you the opportunity to not have that issue and uh, anyways the uh, obvious one is this one right here in front of you as you can see right here where's my finger right here has the spots all over them here this guy right here anyways there are some other ones with some smaller spots on them as you can see this guy right here in the front has a little bit on his forehead and this one over here is a little bit on the top it seems and this one right here has quite a bit on it and the only fish in here that are being attacked by this ick are the ruby reds so there's something to that, and uh, we'll get to the bottom of it and cure it. But, you know, these are always a mystery. So when I come back here, we're going to talk a little bit more about how to deal with ick the best way. I'm really not that all, all that concerned because I know how to deal with this problem, and I will deal with it. But um, I want to talk about a little bit uh, some of the things you really need to think about when you're treating ick and uh, you know some of the important things about uh, doing a health check on your fish every day and this is why it's such a great idea it's very example we'll be back in just a second we'll talk about this so as i showed you the spots on the fish uh, i'm basically seeing it mostly on the ruby red tetras in the tank uh, that is what it looks like and so it's it's not something that most of you who have been in the hobby haven't come across at one time or another. Um, you can quarantine fish, you can do everything right, and sometimes these things just happen. As I um, alluded to, this has been a very long time since I've had anything like this crop up or happen, and I really have no idea how it did happen. Um, as I said, uh, this has been a quarantine tank for many, many years before I put it in my gallery here. 
Uh, never had any problems with it. I have used small amounts of medication in it before I ever uh, fully planted it and that sort of thing. So uh, the mystery is I have not put any new fish in here in six months. So how this popped up, I don't know. So that's the mystery of it though. Um, I have found that uh, people have told me that they have done absolutely everything right. They've quarantined their fish for the proper amount of time. They have even added medications into their quarantine tanks just to be safe. And uh, a year down the road, you know, no new fish added, no nothing, no changes to the tank whatsoever. And all of a sudden a case of Vic pops up. So the, the thing that ends up being the question here, is ick always in our tanks? This is the question that scientists have been, you know, going over for years about ick, and also velvet as well. And uh, the question would be, is ick always present in a tank and it just attacks a weak fish uh, who is vulnerable to it? Well, that would say to you, okay, how come we don't see this more often in tanks that are well established and have uh, uh, fish that somehow get weakened in a way or whatever, and they don't get it, they just die from something else. I, I don't have an answer for that, to be honest with you. But what we can do is talk about what the solutions are to fixing the problem, and then talk about how to get rid of the ick in your tank and uh, not destroy your plants because that's the big thing with people like me and, and many of you is that if you have a planted tank this can be kind of a, a nightmare scenario for you if you don't know what to do now I'm not pushing this particular product well hell yeah I'm gonna push this product to be honest with you uh, it's called ICX and it's made by Aquarium Solutions and uh, I have used uh, other products before I have never used this one before because I've always used a something called it guard which is uh, made by Tetra and a lot of people say oh that stuff is no good it's crap or whatever the one time that I had it I used it guard and it worked but I didn't have any of that on hand and I don't want to wait you know with coronavirus and everything I don't want to wait I did have this ICX on hand because uh, Aquarium Co-op, Cory of Aquarium Co-op, you guys probably know who that is, uh, recommends this stuff amazingly with planted tanks and otherwise. And so I bought a bottle of this just to keep on hand because you just never know. I mean, this covers more than just ick, but uh, it's specifically for ick. It's, it's, that's the main uh, function of it. So uh, what I would say to you is, uh, if you're going to use this product right here in a planted tank, really follow the instructions on the back. Now this is a 20 gallon. Uh, you don't really have 20 gallons in here, so you don't want to over medicate. You want to uh, think about what your substrate and your plants and your rocks and everything, what the displacement of the water is going to be. So I figure probably 15 to 17 gallons is a safe bet on amount of medication to use. So. This is two tables or two teaspoons per 10 gallons. So I used one and three quarter teaspoons on this particular tank. Now, it's uh, something that you can reapply every 24 hours until you don't see it any longer in your tank. And uh, sometimes it can only take 24 hours before it is gone. But uh, I don't know if that's the situation that I'm going to run into, but you can use this as early as another eight hours after applying it the first time. I'm going to get off my knees here because it's killing me, but anyways, you can use this uh, just eight hours after you can reintroduce it into the tank. I, I probably won't do that. I'll probably go uh, not full 24 hours, but maybe uh, you know 18 to 20 hours here, um, and then check this tomorrow morning again and see you know, if the fish are looking better. Um, the second thing you want to do, or the first thing you want to do before you put this product in your tank is to make sure that you have taken the carbon out of your tank because carbon is just going to destroy the uh, medications that are in here that are going to treat these fish and you don't want to have that happen. So make sure that you do remove the carbon in your tank before you use this. The second thing you want to do 
is if you have a small amount of aquarium salt, and I'm not talking about iodized salt from your kitchen or anything like that, if you have a small amount of aquarium salt, uh, you can use that. Now I'm choosing not to use that because aquarium salt can be difficult on plants and I really don't want to get into a situation where I'm harming my plants. So I'm going to be very tactical about this and take it one step at a time and see what happens here. Like I said, it's only the ruby t uh, red tetras that I'm seeing any of this on. Uh, I know it'll spread to other fish if you don't treat it, but that's why we do these health checks every single day. I mean, it's, it has worked for me because I've caught other things that weren't ick, but I've caught other things in tanks where fish have had uh, external parasites, or internal parasites, I mean, excuse me, and, uh, you know, that can spread around your tank, too. And that is a fish that's starting to look gaunt and, you know, not eating very well and that kind of thing. You can usually tell uh, what's happening. But I do a health check every single day on my tanks just to make sure that nothing's going on. I don't count every single fish. I try to eyeball it to make sure that everybody's front and center and present. But you can never be guaranteed that. One of the other things that you want to do, if you, if you do decide to use the salt, let me cover this first. If you decide to use the salt, use it very, very sparingly. You don't need a lot of it. Be, you know, use about half as much as even is what is recommended because you're already using the ICX anyway. This is likely probably going to solve your problem. The second, or the third thing that you want to do is raise the temperature in your tank. Now, I have digital, uh, heaters in my tanks, in every one of my tanks, so I can control that. I keep my tanks at 81 degrees, which is another reason why I'm very surprised that this even happened. But at 81 degrees, um, I guess it can still happen. So uh, what I've done is raised it up to 84. I may go up to 86 tomorrow if I don't see that these fish are getting any better. Um, they should because all of the water parameters and everything in this tank are spot on. They're absolutely perfect. Uh, so stress in this tank, I, I just don't know what caused this. I mean, I have no idea. It'll be a mystery and it'll remain a mystery because I just don't know. But do make sure you do those three things. That you pull the carbon out of the tank, number one. Number two, that you uh, do... Uh, put a little bit of salt in there, aquarium salt only, do not, that's a disclaimer on my part, do not put table salt from your uh, table into your tank, that's a no-no. Uh, there is specifically salt for aquariums, you want to use that. And then the third thing is to raise the temperature up, which I have done, I've gone from 81 to 84 degrees, that's going to help make the parasite drop off the fish. Now once the parasite drops off the fish, it's going to go into your substrate there and that's where the problems really get to be a big deal because what happens is they start to bloom out in that substrate and then they start attacking your fish all over the place. And it pops up really, really fast. And uh, once these uh, little uh, cystic uh, spots on the fish uh, start to heal, the nice thing about the ICX is, is it leaves behind a coat on the fish that helps the fish to heal, which is really kind of a cool feature if you're going to have to deal with this problem uh, that you are uh, looking at the full health of your fish. So anyways guys, I'm going to keep this uh, uh, short here. I, <laughs> I was just absolutely shocked to see this this morning because I just never ever have ick issues in my tank. It's just very, 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 very uh, strange to me that this happened and it is so rare in any of my tanks. Like I said, it's been two years since I've had a case of ick and uh, I'm just baffled because there's no new additions to the tank, uh, no rhyme or reason to why this would happen and uh, here we are. So anyways, Try ICX, try Ick Guard. I swear by that stuff as well. It's made by Tetra. It's not even expensive. So you think, oh God, it's cheap. You know, it doesn't work. It did actually work one other time when I had it. I didn't have the ICX on hand. But this is okay to use according to my supplier who is very knowledgeable. He's uh, 
uh, he's actually a, a, a professor who knows about fish a lot and has told me that this product will not harm your plants. So if you want to, uh, you know, look that up and research that a little bit further, please do because I have put it in with my plants. So I'm just going to tell you as a disclaimer, I'm not telling you to do that. I am telling you that I've been told that this will work fine without um, removing your plants. That, that would just be a real mess to try to do all that. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Uh, crazy stuff happens. We're not all Teflon and, uh, you know, things uh, happen to even the best of us in this hobby here. So leave your comments down below if you have any questions about the ICX or if you want to add to this, if you've had experience with ICX and you have used the product before or if you've had experience with ick problems in your tank and you want to talk about that leave it in the comments down below and i'll get back to you and hopefully uh, we can help some other people out that uh, may be running across this problem as well anyways thank you hit that like button hit the subscribe button and share with your friends appreciate it you guys we will see you on the next one until then you're out of here